Hey everybody, it's Mikhail. It is cold and nasty outside, so I'm going to stay inside and show you guys how to make a really cool trap. This is uh, just the neatest little bamboo mouse trap. I mean, it's, it is hair trigger sensitive and it is really, really powerful. It is just the most amazing... Oh gosh! <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not quite that strong, but it is uncomfortable and it is plenty strong to kill a, a field mouse and... Uh, I am going to make a larger one, suitable for rats, but uh, the reason why I'm making this video is uh, there's a fellow named Sean Woods on YouTube, and he has been doing a series of primitive rat and mouse traps, and so uh, I figured I'd, you know, build one for him and see what he thought. So I've got the bamboo right here to make a trap suitable for a rat, or heck, even a marmot, jeez, or a squirrel, but... Um, that stuff is just really, really thick, <laughs> so it's going to take a lot more work to build one. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build one out of that bamboo, which is a lot thinner, um, just to show you the principles on, on how to construct one of these really cool traps. Before I start, I wanted to show you the basic operation of this particular trap. So first of all, this is the spring or the engine that drives this trap. It's much like a twitch-up snare. This spike, however, is useful because you can set this into the ground and it holds the trap in place. Now, all it has is it's just got a big long string that goes to the very top of this spring or the engine. And that bends like a bow, which gives the line its tension. To set it, all we have to do is we take this lever and we hook it underneath that... A uh, little loop of string right there. Can you see that? Excellent. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dress the noose on the inside. So I'll pull this little knot right here and then force it back down just to make sure that it's not binding up against that little retention loop. And what I'm doing is I'm making sure that the noose is against the inside wall of the pipe. Um, that way <clears throat> anything that goes in there has to be inside the noose to reach the back of it. Then I would throw some bait in, something yummy in the back here, and then this is the trigger stick. It's got a little shelf carved in the top, that little notch, and that hooks against the inside wall, the inside lip of the bamboo tube itself. So then I just take this and get it in there. It is a little bit sensitive, but oh, there we go. You can see that little uh, trigger stick. Now the, the rodent <clears throat> it can see the bait behind it. It can smell the bait. It can even touch the bait. But in order to get the bait, it has to push that trigger out of the way. And in doing so... It uh, grabs something that you can see. And as it tries to get past that little trigger to get to the bait, as soon as it touches it, it uh, locks it in place. It pulls that noose tight around its neck and chokes it out in short order. And the animal can't fight it because he's up against this uh, the inside wall of this bamboo. Can't move his arms, can't nothing. So this is a very, very effective trap. And, um, you know, as I said, they're easy to make and they last forever. So now I'm going to show you how to make one out of that bamboo right over there. And I'm going to do it all just using a knife because, you know, I could use a saw, but that's cheating. No cheating. So the first thing I need is I need to cut this node. So I'm going to cut it back about here. So I have, oh, maybe an inch, two inches of material beyond the node. And that's going to be where I hold uh, the, the engine, the, the spring stick. But I want to make sure that the back end of this thing is sealed off. That way the, the critter only has one direction to enter the trap. Kind of cut and then go back the other way. And the reason why I do this is these bamboo fibers on the outside of the, on the, outside of the, the cane here, I guess is the proper term for it, it uh, will peel. And if you don't cut through the fiber and you just try to work your knife through it that way, it'll splinter and it'll lift up, which is really a pain. Um, so this makes sure that it's a good clean cut. Again, all I'm doing is I'm just working around it and cutting it like so. Now that only took a few minutes to chew through that all the way. Um, so now what I'll do is I'll take my knife and I'm just gonna trim it up a little bit. It's not necessary completely. It's just, uh, it just looks pretty. And I don't want any slivers coming off this thing. Bamboo is, remarkably sharp they make knives uh, literally that I've seen butcher chickens and cut you know vegetables with just out of this this outer coating 
because it's so high in silica it really will open you up and so that's why again I like to you know sit and chew from both sides with my knife so that it gets rid of the it cuts the fibers so they don't lift up and start to run on me because um, they really are almost like fiberglass and so uh, yep yeah. now what I'm going to do is you know more or less I'm going to shorten this to uh, about the length of that other one because that's a good size for this diameter bamboo and clean but uh, here comes the fun part here are the places where you want to cut uh, first I want to cut where the noose is going to go so I'm going to put a hole right here and then we'll put a hole right here now those holes are going to be where the noose goes through as well as the little rope that uh, holds everything in place and then I'm going to come back and I figure, you know, length of a mouse's head is about two fingers or so. I'm going to put the trigger stick right about here. That's where I want to cut a hole for the, the trigger to go in because that still leaves me enough room to put bait back here. But that makes sure that the, the mouse or the rat's got his head all the way in there before he touches it. Sorry, I know my hands are kind of large and it gets in the way on the camera. I'll do my best to make sure everybody can see what I'm doing. Boy, it sure is handy having that that center line just kind of natural part of the bamboo there. So cut right to here. Okay. Then the last thing we're gonna do <clears throat> is we're going to cut a hole here. And then one on the opposite side, uh, which we'll eyeball a little bit. But, you know, when we actually get the, the spring stick ready, then we'll use that to make sure that everything is lined up where it needs to be. Right about there. Ta-da! So, two holes right there. We've got to open a notch here open a notch here and open a notch there and that's all so I will get to cutting those and show how I do it I imagine that the awl on the Swiss Army knife would do an exceptional job of this but uh, dude I've seen videos of guys who do these a million times more than I ever have and uh, they're using basically a machete <laughs> to carve this whole thing. So I just wanted to show that uh, this can be done with uh, a very large knife. A lot of people would think, hey, it's you know, not suitable for carving. And I would say, I disagree. It's all about learning to use the tools at hand. So there's the, the two holes for the, the noose and for the retention loop. That really didn't take hardly any time. And then I'm going to cut right here. I'm going to open up that little spot. Again, I like to cut the fibers on both sides before going too far. Because otherwise they will split and run the length of the bamboo. And they're sharp, obnoxious, and they could cause this thing to crack. So, so I got a hole here. It's getting, it's pretty good. Now I just want to square it off. So I'll just take the tip of my knife, and drive it right in there. There we go, got the little mouth. He almost looks like a little tiki man. I'm going to eat a mouse, yeah. So <laughs> what I'm going to do is, next I got to cut this hole, and I got to cut that one. Uh, but I want to make sure that they friction fit the spring pole, so I don't have to use any pins or shims to keep it in place. So I'm going to cut that spring pole right now, 
it just sucks because I'm going to use up a lot of my bamboo to do it. But, uh, hey, you know, that's what it's for. <laughs> Gotta be careful with this. And I'm not kidding, this stuff is sharp. Let's clean it up. Make it fairly straight on both sides. He thought I was kidding too. It's not going to be like <clears throat> a metal knife, but uh, it will uh, cut. <laughs> and that's just the, uh, the the outside edge of that bamboo. That's plenty toothy enough to cut meat and, and everything. And when it gets dull, you just throw it away. So what I, what I have is I have a, um, a taper from the fat end down to the thin end. And I'm just, I just want to keep that fairly consistent because what I'm going to do is hopefully if I cut those notches properly, you know, the holes on the, on the, the actual uh, tube, that uh, it'll friction fit in there and I won't have to use a shim. But I do have to trim down this node, the inside of this part and the outside so that it fits through the hole. So. What I'll do is I'll get them both cut, but I'm going to err on the side of making them just a little bit too small. And then what I'll do after I do that is I'll open them up bit by bit as necessary to allow the the uh, the engine, the, the spring stick to, to fit in there the way I need it to. This tra these traps are are long term and you can reuse them over and over I mean, you look at a snare wire you know snare is a one shot deal you know usually the animal will tear that snare up so bad that uh, you can only you can't use it again I'm just saying that this trap what you trade in exchange for having to spend more time to build it is uh, longevity is it going to work? You know, sometimes I impress myself. <laughs> That's locked in tight. Ain't going nowhere. And you can leave this to the end. I'm just going to do it now. I'm going to sharpen this point right here. Because that's how I'm going to jam it in the ground. And, ooh, did I do it? Did I do it? I did it. But it didn't quite get through. It just got through the callus. It didn't cut me. Oh, that was close. I'm going to hold on to this. And then cut that. That was close. No cigar. Yeah, oh, the other thing I like doing with this. It's like I like cutting a little bit of a... Almost a knock. You know, I'll just cut it like so. That way what I can do is I can make a loop on the end of my cord and just fit it over the top of this. Okay, so let's carefully remove the spring. <sighs> now I gotta get some cordage. This particular Tai Long or Ti Long or however it's said, this is all hand spun dog bane cordage. So you can do that if you want. It just takes more time. I'm going to use bank line like I used on this trap just because I don't have any more dog bane. Okay, now what this is, is this is where the toggle rests underneath. This is the, the, the little loop that holds it in place. And I'm just using the same holes as the noose because, uh, hey, you know, it's efficient. I don't have to uh, cut any more extra holes. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to... About the size of the tube, you know. Make a loop about yay big. There we go. So there it is. See how I tied that? Remove the excess. Ta -da. Now I'm going to um, make the noose and insert that. Let's cut it up. There we go.
Now what I do is I take it to one end. Like that. And then I'm going to push it back through the other hole, which is already a pain to get one line through. Imagine trying to get this one. There we go. Okay, now, now that I have this loose end out, I'm going to tie a big knot. Because the idea is I want uh, it to stop and be too big to go back through the hole. So there's my knot. And then notice it can't pull back through the hole. That's what makes the noose. See? Doop. Now, I need to make a little paddle and a, and a, and a trigger stick, really. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to square it up. Again, get that blasted edge off on the bamboo so it doesn't open you up. It, uh, it got really close on me there a second ago. Um, it, uh, luckily, like I said, it didn't get quite, didn't get quite to bleeding, but you can see it got me just a little bit. Okay, take that. Make sure it fits into the hole. Yes. I want to make sure that it goes most of the way to the bottom. Um, and now I'm going to just kind of see if I can't get it to notch or to give me a little indication where the inside lip is. There we go. That'll work. And now what I do is I will cut the, uh, the, the shelf. And the shelf is, is the, you know, again, it's the trigger. It's what holds on to the inside lip of the bamboo tube. And uh, whenever it is disturbed, that's what releases the trap. Okay. So you see how I cut a little lip in there? I'm going to test it on the trap. Make sure it'll hook. Oh, yeah, that'll hook fine. You know, a wise man would have narrowed it up before cutting it off of the rest of the stick. Because then he'd have something to hold on to. So there is my trigger. See, a little shelf. Little thing. Done. Now, next thing I need is the toggle. It's just a little piece of stick about that long. Then <laughs> snippity snip. Ta-da! We have all of our components. Now all we got to do is tie the string to it, pull it tight, and then we're done. Paddle. See? All tied. So I'm going to need to tie the, the toggle to it right about there. So now I have these two pieces tied together. And, and they're not perfect, but they're close enough. See, look. Once I put that in there and I hook this underneath the loop... Um, you can see kind of how, there you go. See, it's not perfect. It'd be nice if it was perfectly parallel, but whatever. That'll work. It'll do the job. So now all I gotta do is just tie this string to here. And first what I want to do is make sure that I have enough, that I have enough of that string to make the noose on the inside so that it, you know, it's all around that rim. And then, uh... You know, right about there, that's where I'm going to tie it to this thing. Locks in place. And what I want to do is pull this up. And then you see the little notch at the top? It doesn't have to be really under tension. I mean, you know, you, you, I mean depending on how, how strong you want this thing to be, you know, I can certainly put a little bit more tension, like right there. And so that's a good marker. Now I'm just going to tie a knot. That will give me a loop. Just like so. Just a little overhand knot. So I'll bend it over. Put that little loop over the top of the trap. Okay. See? It's under good tension. 
and touch there we go it's got me ah. so there you have it everybody the t-long or tie long mouse trap in this size i guess a rat trap if you make it bigger but i hope you enjoyed that if you found this was useful uh and heck, you know, subscribe. I might come up with cool stuff later. <laughs> but if not, whatever. I'm just glad you enjoyed the video. Um, I am going to make a bigger version out of that lovely bamboo right there. But uh, I'll show you the end result. Well, actually, you know what? I'm not going to show you the end result of that. To see that, you're going to have to go watch Sean Wood's channel. And uh, hopefully he'll get that video up here soon with that stuff. But in the meantime, I'm going to put down in the description uh, links to all the original source videos that I found that uh, I figured out how to make this trap from. They took the time and effort to post it first, so they should get um, some recognition for sharing that information with everybody. But uh, in any case, this is Mikhail. I will talk to you later.